What's going on everybody and welcome back to Cedar Flags. We are back near Cedar Speedway and in this episode we're doing two pretty major things here. We're building the second grandstand and then we're going to be adding something that somebody actually suggested to me and I don't remember if it was on Twitter or in my Discord or maybe even in the comments section but we're going to be putting a garage in like a racing garage that you typically see in like the infield of a racetrack. So great idea. I really love how that came out. So uh, that's a little farther in on the time lapse, but we'll get to that. But first things first, and that is we are going through and, of course, making the second grandstand. Now, again, this is a facade. This isn't actually a working grandstand. As much as some of you guys really wanted to see grandstands with, like, benches up there, I just, I felt like putting the path work up there and having benches, it would work, yeah, but it just, it wouldn't attract a lot of people up there, I don't think, just to go sit on a bench. So, it was a little bit of give and take. I just didn't really want to make this huge grandstand because when you put path work up there, it makes it exponentially larger. It just needs more room to work. So, uh, that's why we aren't actually building a functional grandstand. But again, this does have a purpose. It's not like it's just there for looks. Uh, you saw me put the two archways in there, and eventually we're going to put some of the uh, service... I guess stalls in there, is, is service stall the right thing? The first aid and the restroom, and uh, I think I even put an ATM in there, but uh, yeah, we're going through and we're just building the back end now. You did actually catch me at the way early part of this time lapse. Go ahead and copy the side of the first uh, grandstand that we did, and then of course, separate it from the building and then bring it over here to its new location. And then of course we downscaled it just a little bit just because I didn't want the second grandstand to be as large as the first one. So again, it's a little bit scaled back and that's for the I guess the purpose of what it is. I mean, it sh it wasn't supposed to be like a second huge grandstand. This is like the the side. It's not like the main race uh area like the the start finish line i guess at a racetrack will typically have the biggest grandstand near it because that's where everybody wants to see that's where you see the race start that's where you see the races finish so i guess uh yeah but anyway we're going through here and we're just building this up again it's uh, another one of those things and this time i actually learned that <laughs> well i f i had the groups of those art blocks already made pre-made so all i had to do was copy them change the color and then get that pattern to work out again but yeah we're just going through and building the side of the grandstand here just to match up with the other side that we pretty much already have done and then we're taking the back and kind of doing the same thing that we did with the last grandstand we're gonna be putting in the fake little walkway areas up there and just using the same styling you'll actually see me use some art or not art blocks but uh like wall blocks here and there just to get spacing of those pillars worked out so yeah just a little trick that i kind of i don't know if i i came up with that idea but it's it's just a little trick that you guys could use if you're having trouble getting those blocks that aren't actually on the grid to line up properly and look like they're properly spaced out so yeah just go ahead and place a wall because the wall is always going to be on the grid and then you can use that wall as kind of like a, a guideline if you will to put up those those whatever like the flags or the pillars or anything that's free form uh placement so yeah we're just going through placing the rest of these and the back if, if you can see right now it looks a little flat and eventually we put three more souvenir stands in here and i say souvenir but there's also i think uh, a couple food stands in here i i don't honestly remember what i put in here it's been a little while since i actually recorded this footage and i'm just getting around to recording the actual video but uh yeah the the back of this kind of looks a little flat overall so after we do some of the major detail work around the plazas, we uh, we go ahead and change that up just a little bit. But you're seeing me right now go ahead and use that wall piece just to get those all of those pillars perfectly lined up. And I say perfectly, but it's as exact as I can get it because, again, you're just using it kind of as a guide just to get those set up properly. But yeah, uh, we have a lot to do in this episode. And after we finish this kind of small area of the grandstand... We are going to, of course, put the plaza and the pathwork in, and of course, the pl the pathwork 
is super fun in this game. It's so good. It's it's it needs work. Let's be honest. It um yeah, it takes a while to get that all settled, but uh, eventually, I actually really like how this all came out. This whole section, like this corner of the park back here, is a really cool little area. It's it's kind of secluded at the moment just because there's only. I guess one thing back here, and that is Cedar Speedway, but eventually we'll have more stuff growing around it, and I think somebody actually suggested we might want to do, like, a, a Stratocoaster back here, which could be really cool because it's got, like, the, the Top Thrill Dragster kind of uh, car, like, where it's an actual race car car train on the roller coaster, so that could fit the theme back here really well. I just, I don't want to do that right away because I feel like having the biggest coaster in the park so early on in like the park's life would just be kind of weird like i feel like just it'd be like oh look this is the biggest coaster we're ever gonna get now what uh eh, we'll just build some more coasters that aren't as big i don't know some people are really into that uh just like the height of the coaster some people are more into like what the coaster does i know a lot of you guys are into the themed coasters which i've, I've actually come to the conclusion or somebody actually made me realize that this this park that we're building cedar flags is more of an amusement park rather than a theme park. And I honestly, when I set out to do this project, I, I wasn't even thinking of that distinction, but it's exactly what it is. Like this is more of an amusement park than a theme park. We aren't going with these heavy, like themed areas. We're doing more of just like ride focused theming. And in a sense, it's a little bit minimalist. So it's not like this heavy, like Gravity Mod, for example, wasn't this massively themed thing. Yeah, the scenery all kind of fit the same theming. But it's more of just focusing on how good of a coaster Gravity Mod is. So, yeah, that's kind of the realization that I've gone through with the uh, Cedar Flags here. But, yeah, moving forward, I think we need to, I guess, keep that in mind that we're, we are focusing more on the, I guess, rides at hand more than the theming around it. But that said, I don't want to, like, completely go ahead and discount all of the theming that we can do. Because, I, I don't know, we have done a lot of it. I just feel like building roller coasters is one of my strengths in these kind of games. And I'm picking up the the, the scenery building as, as I go a little bit. But, yeah. So, anyway, while I was rambling on, you saw me go ahead and place the plaza work and the path work. And, of course, um, yeah, it was a pain. There was a, a few really weird things where I was trying to get the paths to kind of like clip through each other correctly and, and kind of go all out to to figure out how it worked. There were a couple areas that I wasn't really happy with, but at the same time, it, it got to a point where I was like, this is, this is good. This is fine. Good enough for me. But anyway, we're kind of filling this little kind of awkward space right here with some of these tires. Now, in like an actual theme park, there are actually mechanics that work on the go-karts. They are functioning like cars. They have gas engines in them a lot of the time. Uh, actually more modern car or more modern go-karts and a lot of like indoor places are, are coming out with these electronic go-karts, which are apparently pretty fun, but I have not actually ridden, rode them. But uh, anyway, the our theme park would actually have a, uh, a mechanic on hand, so they would actually have to work on the cars. So obviously the tires that we place down there, they're too big for the go-karts, but it's it's a cool little area just to kind of have, just to fill some space. It, it gives that little bit of a theming kind of feel to it. But uh, we're going back to the other grandstand here and filling in this utility area, like I said earlier, with the ATM, the first aid, and the restroom. And of course we have to go ahead and put some signage up. And signage is actually a topic that I'm going to talk about a little bit more probably in the live portion because we just got the major summer update and that gives us some massive new tools for the game and I'm very excited for it. And I think the next, uh, the next episode of Cedar Flags is going to be focused on that, so stay tuned for that. But anyway, uh, yeah, just putting up some signs here. It's one of those things that I, I don't think I tend to forget signage just because I, I work with signs uh, as a career at the moment. But um, yeah, I, I, lighting is the one thing that I usually forget when I'm doing this, and we do have to go through and do that. So I think in the next episode, we're going to be doing a little bit more of like the scenery side of things and just kind of going back through the park and doing stuff like that. But speaking of scenery, you're watching me now go ahead and place all of these tires again. 
just to keep this plaza kind of uniform in, uh, like, the styling around here. You can, like, if you walk on the main path, which is, I guess, this rock textured path, you know that in this, like, black path work is the, the Cedar Speedway kind of area. So I love having these as kind of like a... a area or uh, uh, some sort of way to define this area I guess is what I was trying to say there but uh, yeah it was a pain it was really very much a pain to get these done um, I think at, at one point I discovered that I shouldn't be so I guess tedious in placing these so close to the edge of that path and onto the grass if you kind of put it halfway on the path halfway on the grass it, it is way easier to place all those tires down and I actually got a really good comment and I didn't realize it until I was uh, done recording this episode. But somebody was saying, instead of all of these flowers in here, put some of the, like, uh, lights, like the path lights. So I think we're going to go through and do that. Like I said, the next episode's probably going to be a lot of, like, the lighting stuff that we've neglected over the series so far. But, yeah, that's a great idea to whoever recommended that. And, of course, we'll go through and figure that all out after or in the next one. But... Yeah, these trees we're just placing down and getting some of this nature work done here. Uh, we didn't go really crazy with the nature around here just because, uh, I don't know, we have all of those flowers kind of in those tires. I liked having the trees there, but the one thing I will say about the trees is that they are kind of low to the ground. I feel like the sight lines of this area could have been a little bit better if the trees, like the leaves of the trees started a little higher up. But I didn't want to go ahead and place a whole nother... Uh, type of tree back here just because we've kind of been working with a certain grouping of trees so far so that's kind of what I've been trying to do but uh, we're just going through and detailing the shop faces a little bit uh, I had a comment that was somebody really hated the off-center signage over on the main grandstands and to that I say I like it for the simple fact that it's Kind of hard to get that lightning bolt sign to go directly over it without going up onto the windows, and that just didn't make sense to me. But anyway, we're doing what I said earlier and just trying to add a little bit of dimension to this back area by bringing out this kind of like sign facade or sign face area. Just a little bit of angles here. And I had thought about maybe even pulling the shop forward like to the main path but it just didn't work because all of the paths were already made. I just, I think I got a little bit lazy there, but I, I do like how this comes out here. It's it's kind of interesting having those little supports there and then just having the, the sign uh, kind of on its own little plane there. So it's kind of an interesting area. From a distance, it looks a lot more interesting than just having a flat wall with a bunch of shops through it. But anyway, we're moving on now to the user, or the comment suggested garage. And this posed a little bit of a challenge. Now, I, I really wish that I could paint like concrete on the ground, but we can't do that. So we go ahead and use this smooth, con or is it rough concrete, uh, flat roof. We go ahead and sink the terrain down and then use this as kind of the area that we're building uh, all of these garages. So, of course, I, I understood, like, the basic shape that I wanted to go for here, but then getting the garage door was kind of a guess and check, like a trial kind of type deal. You just saw me put some art blocks there. It wasn't really working. I tried that corrugated roof. It didn't really work, and then I found these iron, like, girder pieces, and these are perfect for what we are doing here. So, in the end, all of these uh, four garage faces per side have garage doors and of course I'm copying them now. I actually went through with the girders and swapped them like rotation wise a few times just to kind of make it a little bit more interesting because they do all have the same texture on there but then of course we go ahead and open one of these up and leave a couple at the top just to signify that the garage door is open and then we're going to go ahead and place some more uh, racetrack inspired theming around it. So yes, this looks great. This looks exactly like a a garage door that you would find at a garage in a in a racetrack. So this is I, I am super excited about how this came out. There's sometimes when you're building things in this game and you're like, ah, I don't know how I'm gonna accomplish this. I don't really know if this is gonna look good. And then all of a sudden you find out like a little trick 
or, or just a piece that wasn't meant to do what you're trying to make it do. And it just, it ends up so nice. And this is one of those times and it's great. But yeah, we're going through and just kind of finishing the walls here. And eventually, I, I don't know. I liked having the kind of arching, the white arch going over the roof. And I thought it was going to look really good if we kind of got those in between the roofs. And of course, we had to make that super complicated. So I had to go through and actually segment all of these buildings out into four unique buildings just to get the spacing right on those. But it, it was really worth it. It looks so good in the end here. So it's just one of those things that just building as it kind of progressed I didn't really have like a master plan for what this looked like. Like I, I kind of envisioned having the four garages in a row, but then just I didn't really know what the rest of the building was supposed to look like. So it, it just eventually takes shape. But you're seeing me right now kind of fill this garage out with some uh, scenery. Again, we went with the tires. I put some of the road signs in there. You really, really wouldn't see that in like an actual race garage, but uh, it's one of those things in here just to kind of fill up a little bit of the garage. Now, we don't really have a lot of scenery in the game that's, like, go-kart specific. So I couldn't really fill this up with, like, a bunch of toolboxes or, like, a, an actual go-kart. That would be really cool. I really wish we could get, like, the train cars from each of the coasters and, like, a go-kart as a prop. Because then you could set those out in front of the queue. Like, if you go to a, an amusement park or a theme park, you'll you'll notice sometimes they'll have, like, an actual seat from the ride at the queue. So you can sit in it, and if you're a bigger dude, or a bigger female, not discriminating, but you can see if the restraints actually fit over, like, your, your body. So you're going to be comfortable on the ride, and you don't have to wait two hours to get up to the ride and be like, oh, I don't fit in these seats, and that, that sucks. So... I really wish the devs would put that in because it's really not that hard. I mean, they already have the models for the coaster trains and everything. And I know, I know, I say it's not that hard even though I've never built a game in my life. And I imagine it's probably nothing's easy when you're designing a game. So, but anyway, we're just kind of adding a little bit more detail to this. Uh, the, the blank white walls on the sides of these looked a little strange just because they were so bleak. And the grandstands have all of this, like, black accent work that's going around it. So in the end, uh, switching, adding a little bit more, like, accent work to the area, uh, to the to the garage area, was actually a really, really cool thing to do. Now, what we're doing now is actually going through and putting these race walls up. They're called race barriers, and I had another really good comment. You guys have been on point in this series, and really all over my channel, just with comments like, hey check out this race barrier it's really cool it's gonna go really well for this area so i did and yes i agree it is awesome it was kind of a pain to get right i think i don't know i may have i i don't know looking at this now it looks like if you go from right to left it looks like the anchor point on those parts might be easier to do that with but anyway these go in after a little bit of struggling but uh, it, it's it's all good. It wasn't really that big of a pain, but uh, it just adds to that corner a little bit. Now, I guess in a real racetrack, you'd have pretty much barriers the entire way around the racetrack. So uh, it's, it's one of those things that I really don't want to go through and do the barrier all the way around, but it was just a, it's a good little touch over here where we have actual theming work here. So uh, yeah, we're actually going through and putting some of these fences up, and eventually we're going to get to the point where I pull the concrete, I, I use concrete in like air quotes here, the, the concrete roofs there, and pull that all the way close to the paths. Because in the end here, I got it all kind of set up, but it just, it was kind of weird having like that little strip of grass in there. And so I really wanted to just butt all of that concrete up to the pathwork. And in the end, I feel like it makes such a crisp line and the design over here is really great. I also didn't mention, but I really love how to get to the bathrooms, you can, you have to walk next to the track. So it looks like people are going to be like right up next to the track, looking in on the action as, as the go-karts go by. And, um... It's, it's going to be really cool when all of this area starts to get used, I guess. Right now, we don't have really anything open over here. There's really no purpose for anybody to come walk back here or do anything. So, again, when we open this, when we get more rides, when we connect all of these paths back up to the main path on the other side of Gravity Mod, 
all of that's gonna kind of fix itself and it's gonna it's gonna look great i i love building in this game and as soon as like things start getting used it's like all of your hard work kind of paid off so it's one of those things that i'll look forward to i guess but that's pretty much it for the garage there i believe uh we're just kind of trying to fix these fences and get them all snapped to the right area over here and uh then we're gonna go ahead and move along to more of the theming and this is probably the last thing we do in the time lapse here but i found this trophy and i really wanted to maybe add this to the front of cedar speedway now i know it might be kind of out of place if we're going by like a, a realism speedway kind of thing but i just felt like having something over here was kind of interesting just to fill the space again it goes back to this is kind of like a theme park uh, in, a, in a sense it's more of an amusement park but um yeah that's pretty much it for the time lapse i guess let's go ahead and check out the entire build in the live portion all right guys so we are back in the live portion of this video and of course as you can see there's a lot of confetti and that's coming out of the top of this trophy which is the last thing that we did in the time lapse just to add a little bit of a, a, a touch I guess over here uh, the really the main thing that I wanted to do here was fill this space up and looking at this now it's actually not centered on this but it is centered to this so I don't know if maybe you fixed that but uh, anyway yeah when I went ahead and built this path work and I tried to get this path to kind of turn into a plaza the only way that that happened was it snapped the entire thing down to here but underneath this there is actually a small space of grass and yeah, to kind of cover that up, I had to go ahead and put the tires back down. But yeah, now we just have this kind of awkward little trophy sitting out here in front. But uh, it, it's kind of cool. I guess it adds some motion to the area. But we're going to get more motion in the area when we have actual people coming down here to, I guess, queue for Cedar Speedway. And uh, somebody actually pointed out that the queue for this ride is pretty small. And I think you're right, but I'm not really good at in this game about making the correct size cues. I, my, my thinking, I guess, at this point is the more we build, the more people will be able to kind of spread out if they can't queue for a ride. So I'm not all that worried about this. Also, there's really not much other space to kind of build a queue at this point. We kind of enclosed it, so it's kind of just stuck there. But anyway, uh, the one thing that I will say is, I think I mentioned this, but the, the trees on this area are a little, just a tiny bit, tall for my liking like i really wish if you were right here you could see this entire grandstands area back here and the other souvenir shops back here but i guess for the most part it's not that bad you can clearly tell that this is the race area but uh yeah anyway we're just kind of uh gonna poke around here and check out what we did now we did kind of just take the same concept here from the other grandstands except it's a little bit smaller you'll notice there's only two checkered patterns here for the the grandstand uh, color i guess uh, scheme going on back here and of course there's no big glass press box area over here but the one thing that i did notice is that i forgot to put lighting back here so we are going to go through that and like i mentioned earlier we are going to do that probably in the next episode we're just going to pretty much focus on some small scenery stuff and some lighting it's not going to be the most exciting of the episodes but it's going to add a lot to the park so anyway um let's move down here and just kind of check out this area i love having these tires in here it's just such a nice little area just to because i don't know it was an awkward area i love having this double fence right here it just adds like a another barrier like no one can get onto the track from here and that was one of the big purposes of of kind of doing the theming back here the way i did i didn't want it to look like you could walk pretty much like over just like a couple small tires and be on the racetrack i wanted this to be like a little bit more of an immersive thing where you're back here and you're like, oh man, the, the cars are whizzing past, but you have this like safety thing just in case like the cars wreck or flip over. They're not going to hurt you again. It's a go-kart. It's not going to, but it's, it's a little bit of an immersion thing. But um, yeah, anyway, I guess let's move around to the back here. We have the three shops back here. Of course, we have the little facade that I built. And then of course the little shop covers just to give this a little bit of a little bit of color back here because without those 
it just, it looked really plain and bland, and I wanted something back here to just kind of, I guess, draw a little bit more attention back here, just to the shops, because, yeah, like I said, they were just kind of back there, floating around, and I didn't think that the signs were enough, but... Uh, moving on this way, we have the beautiful, beautiful garage building. I will actually have to blueprint this, and... Oh, actually, no, I can't blueprint this, because it's four unique buildings. Like, if I click on this, it's one building. This is another one, and another one, and another one. But the reason for that was because of the way that these kind of arch pieces worked. And then, of course, the detail work is a completely separate building. But, yeah, the the arch pieces were kind of clipping through scenery, or clipping through the roofs or whatever, and it was just, it wasn't looking good, and that was way before I even put these, like, detail pieces on there. But, yeah, in the end, this is uh, uh, five buildings into one, so no blueprint is available for that, but I can blueprint the grandstand buildings and the other grandstands and all that kind of stuff, and I will, and that'll be up in the Steam Workshop, and of course that'll be in the link below. I also, all, every episode, I upload the save file to the Steam Workshop, so if you want to come into Cedar Flags yourself and go ahead and do whatever you want to do, build the rest of the park, do it, but I only ask that you let me know on Twitter and just, like, shoot me a, a screen cap of what you do. That'd be really interesting to see you guys build, but... Um, yeah, I guess in the next episode, I'm just kind of wrapping this one up here. The next episode, we're going to do some scenery around the track because for the most part, we didn't put any signs up here or anything. I don't really want to go, like, overboard with signage. I had a couple people suggest maybe adding onto the track and, and maybe taking this turn. And we could maybe do something, adding just, like, a little bit more of a turn through here or something. And, and that's something I'm going to look at. Uh, and we'll probably end up doing in the next one, but uh, just know that that's I guess a, a suggestion that I'm taking into account and then in the next one of course we're gonna be going through and doing some of the uh, Lighting and the video billboards that we now have so this is gonna be really fun We're gonna have a lot of fun with that in this series and I am I'm looking forward to adding our own branding and that kind of stuff to Cedar Flags, but yeah, uh, after the next episode, we should open Cedar Speedway. Everything should be ready to go, and we'll see the people kind of populate this area. But guys, that pretty much wraps this episode up. Give me a thumbs up if you liked it, a thumbs down if you disliked it. And guys, until next time, I'll see you back here in Cedar Flags.